very hot job. You know they won't hire just any old slob. You don't have to wear a tie or a coat. You just have to know how to float. <laughs> we sing the song of the sewer, of the sewer, we sing this song. Together we stand, we shove all in hand to keep things rolling along. I wake down a manhole with a guy named Bruce, and we are in charge of all the refuse. He lets me go first while he holds the lid. I'll tell you, this weekend we sing the song of the sewer. So by 1983, the town of Chester had been under a state mandate to install a sewer system uh, for the center of town for nearly 17 years. The State Department of Environmental Protection had threatened to take legal action, cautioning both Chester and Deep River that it would be denied funding and that litigation could be started, forcing the towns to bear the cost of the entire project if they did not comply. The original Sewer Commission was formed in 1970 and began making every effort to comply and avoid the heavy state fines and penalties. Studies were done to determine the project's scope and possible regionalization. Residents were very concerned about the proposal and the effect it might have on the town. In 1976, the Council of Governments, then the uh, What's the region? Herper. Herper. <laughs> that was the name of it. Uh, issued a statement assuring the residents that sewers alone would not stimulate growth. Sites for a Chester only system, such as the fairgrounds, North Porter Park, East Liberty Street, um, 
the town office building parking area that, when the town office was located on Main Street at the time, for those of you who don't know. And the current Maple Street parking lot were then looked into. In 1981, the Maple Street lot was chosen to accommodate an underground gravity feed system with a pumping station located at the back of the Four Water Street parking lot. By 1983, the town's Water Pollution, Pollution Control Authority consisted of seven members, myself, Skip Haskin, Haskins as vice chair, Jack Subinsky, Jerry Lamar, Kim Sine, Bill Cochin, and Doris Diorio. Anna Capolini was clerk and recording secretary. Most small town residents would find the installation of a sewer system designed to accommodate a mere 34 properties mundane, perhaps even boring. But not the 3,000 or so residents of Chester, the second smallest town and the second smallest state in the country. No, sir, <laughs> Chester knew how to make a big deal out of even the smallest thing. Hence, the sewer parade of 1983. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what you're looking at here is the Pentagon Brook behind all of your favorite restaurants. Uh-huh. Didn't think it was there, did you? And back in 1983, when we'd been under mandate, um, we were dumping raw sewage directly into that and had been doing so for at least forever. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm just passing by Richard's notes here. Okay, so let's back up. Um, there were people in town, such as the Viviani family who owned the Chester Hotel, where Leif Nilsson now owns and does his artwork. Um, I had the pleasure um, of having a great conversation with Steve Bibb, who grew up right here in Chester in the Chester Hotel. And Steve said he'd be here today. So Steve, oh. rather than me tell your story, why don't you tell your story and give you a microphone? Naturally, I grew up in Chester. I was born in 1953. So, um, and as a young as a youngster in town, where would we go to play? The brook. We played. We played in the brook every day. We would fish in the brook. We never brought them home, but we would fish in the brook. We would. We wouldn't swim in it, but we would wade in it because that's okay, and so forth. So, but the story that I portrayed to Leslie years ago was the fact that I knew we had the where the barbershop was, the pipe went under the road, under the building on the other side of the street, dumped into the brook. And um, one of the things that we used to gauge our time by was if around four or five o'clock, my mother would get home from work, and we're still playing in the brook, as we had all day. And as soon as I saw water come out of our pipe, I would realize that mom's home, and it was time to go home for dinner. <laughs> So, so we did th that went on for many, many years. I still like to tell that story of the people who think that Chester is a very artsy place and <laughs> so forth and so forth. But I say, see that pipe over there? That's our pipe. <laughs> uh, it, it's further upstream. Further upstream. The, there's a unique story about the uh, what um, the paddock as well. The paddock. <laughs> the the uh, bar room. If, 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 if you're not familiar with the original layout of the Pavcock, the bar room was where the dining room is now. Mm -hmm. It had a long hallway and the restaurant was in the front. Yeah. So um, you'd walk in and the, and the bathroom was just off the dining room. Mm -hmm. And if you were young enough or had a mind to, you would go to the bathroom, flush the toilet, and if you were fast enough, you could run out to the bar room <laughs> and stand out the window and watch it fall into the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and, so we knew, we knew everybody's pipe.
which I, we only took about a month ago. And you can see, especially on the far slide there, that nice big hole, that's where the pipes were, right towards the bottom of each of the buildings. Um, just so you know, it wasn't arbitrary that they put a sewer in. Um, so moving along, this is my husband 40 years ago, <laughs> signing the official papers here for the groundbreaking, um, which I was very impressed with. <laughs> Good job. Um, before I go further with Richard, um, I had another little story about the center of town. A friend of ours, Trip Wyeth, who actually is here today, but he's probably too embarrassed to identify himself, um, has a property on Maple Street. It used to be the Chester Book Company, by the, uh, owned by the Nadels. Um, and back in 83, it was the Chester Book Company. Um, but before that, in the late 70s, uh, Trip came to Chester to, for an afternoon visit and discovered that the town was absolutely enthralling. Uh, antique buildings in various states of disrepair, but lots of potential and lots of diversity in the architecture. And he was very serious about purchasing a property back then for his architecture business until it became a nice, hot, humid, sunny summer afternoon <clears throat> and the breeze wafted over Main Street and it was at that time he decided perhaps he should invest elsewhere. Did I tell that right? Okay. I got thumbs up. Alright, so, uh, so there's Richard with his uh, groundbreaking and there are many, many more newspaper articles that were uh, done at the, uh, about this event and Carrie Hall has made a nice display over here for you to have a look at afterwards. Um, so the inter elementary school band was commissioned, a toilet was requisitioned, and champagne was poured into uh, the toilet to commemorate the groundbreaking and the start of construction. And this article was uh, just one of many, as I just said. Claudia Van Ness, who is also here today, uh, was reporting for the Hartford Current at the time. And Claudia, if you would be good enough to share your article about, now this is the groundbreaking, which was in April, um, prior to, the, to any parade even being considered. You want to come up here, Claude? Sure. Otherwise, somebody takes it. Somebody's going to yell, can't hear you. Remember Edmund? Every yeah. town meeting. Yeah. Can't hear you. Well, um, I was reminded of this article, which I totally forgot, did not forget the sewer, but I <laughs> forgot the article until um, Leslie and Richard pointed it out to me. And um, I, what I think is sort of interesting about it is everything between the lines and how the Hartford Current didn't, you know, didn't didn't edit this. <laughs> um, it was a serious paper. <laughs> um, I wrote this in April 15th, on April 15th, or it was published April 15th, 1983. For the past 17 years, the town of Chester has been under state orders to install a sewer system. So when the groundbreaking was held Thursday, officials wanted it to be an event to remember. Marching more or less in step, the Chester Elementary School Band led the small group of participants from the flagpole in the center of town to the banks of the nearby Patacock Brook. 17 years in the making, these kids were even born when we started the model Doris DiMario Water Pollution Control Authority member. Chester has, had, has commissioned and rejected more engineering studies than anyone can remember. The town defied the state. It procrastinated, it argued. But the honors finally went Thursday to the current authority, which has accepted a $345,000 construction bid, to imagine, and to the chairman, Richard Strauss. Strauss stepped smartly behind the school band, a broad grin on his face, a red, white, and blue construction helmet on his head, and a worn garden shovel in his hand. He then dutifully removed a spadeful of dirt from the spot along the brook 
where the system's pumping station will be built. The system, which will be 100% government funded, will serve 30 businesses in the town, town center. The celebrants only had to look across the brook to see the backs of the village's main street buildings and the long, rusting pipes that have spewed raw sewage <laughs> directly into the Patacon for years. When no one noticed the ugly pipes Thursday, the crowd was too curious about a lump covered with a pink bedspread sitting on the brook's banks. With a flourish, Strauss finally whipped off the old bedding to reveal a lidless toilet and a note inside the bowl. Help! I'm being held prisoner in the Chester Water Pollution Control Authority septic tanks. <laughs> the young musicians who had been wondering aloud why they had been drafted out of class burst into giggles. And when Strauss emptied a bottle of champagne into the toilet, the adult participants exploded in cheers. <laughs> Jeremy Strauss and the other WPCA members were so delighted in August when the system was completed that they decided to stage yet one more celebration, the Chester Sewer Parade. <laughs> Resident Dave Morrell designed the official poster which promoted the event. And of course, if you can read that slogan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the commission then ordered dozens of t-shirts with Dave's artwork across the front, and there it is, your number two business is our number one business, and sold out. Uh, there's discrepancy, Richard says there were about eight dozen, I thought there were more, but we basically ran out of shirts, because um, they were people from all over the country were, were requesting them. <laughs> So on September 5th, the parade, led by Chairman Strauss, came, started on the Maple Street parking lot, which was at that time where the um, fields were for the, for the system. And they marched down uh, onto Water Street and over to, for Water Street, to the parking lot. Um, but we weren't the only ones making a fuss about this. When Channel 3 Eyewitness News caught wind of the upcoming event, they sent reporter Rad Berkey and a camera crew to town. Does anyone remember Rad Berkey? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to observe a flushette rehearsal at our house. Oh, more about the flushettes. <clears throat> We're performing an original composition, I'm embarrassed to tell you I wrote it, which is called Chester has its sewer, and a tune from the TV show The Honeymooners that Art Carney, who portrayed Ed Norton, sang, and you heard that when we first opened the, the presentation. Um, speaking of Ed, uh, Mr. Carney was invited to the ceremony and the parade, but he was unable to join us. Um, uh, moving, I'm, I just have to make sure I'm on my notes here. Okay, so we had the Fife and Drum Corps appearing in full battle ray. Some of you may recognize yourselves. Was anybody in the Fife and Drum Corps 40 years ago? No? I'm sure Jeremy was. Jeremy was. Yeah, Jeremy was, right. And we have kids uh, with pots and pans all marching down the street. Uh, you may recognize some of those kids. And some of them are in the articles that are over here. If you can't see them, on the screen, feel free to take a look later. And more kids. Um, I recognize a Sapowski in there. Yeah, a couple of Sapowskis. And a little Schreiber. Yeah. And a little Bear Snow, exactly. Um, this is Jesse Good, uh, and there's a picture of, of what he was wearing, and it's actually over here, the original. This is, Jesse is a sewer rat. Um, <laughs> with a costume made by his mother. Yeah. 
The contractor for the project, uh, DMS Construction, supplied an outhouse with a couple of guys in there. I don't think they're real, but they were there. They were in the parade. And I'm embarrassed, but here we go. <laughs> with his friend Karen Morrow, who was dressed as Ed Norton from the sewers. <laughs> Stephen, and, Stephen and Karen had the honor of making the first official flush from the podium, uh -huh. which required the recording of a toilet flush, of course, and uh, as there was no fresh water available at the pump station, um, we didn't have the recording. Um, you'll also notice the shotgun in the car here is Jerry Lamar. Who, uh, uh, Jerry wasn't able to come today? Was Jerry? Sorry, I didn't see Jerry. No. What? We, we, I think we claimed that we had a contest to select Miss Sewer and Stephen won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Stephen, you are, you are a beauty. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's a custom design of a couple of toilet plungers and toilet brushes and Mom's curlers. my mother's curlers. <laughs> I had a wand. I think I was a scepter. <laughs> You're making me dredge up something. Moving <laughs> along. So this is the original uh, flushette mobile here with the flushettes, uh, which we were uh, created for the purpose of this parade. We are wearing uh, the usual costumes, shower caps, uh, wrapped with toilet paper, waving plungers, and we are on the back of, you guessed it, a dump truck, um, which we call the flushette mobile. And we have kids riding along. Um, we had a lot of fun, we really did. Patty, you're wearing your mom's hat. Your mom was in the. You were in the. Yeah. Oh. Let's see. Can we see Mary in that one? Uh, yeah. Another hat. Yeah. Go back. She's the wearing a hat. No, she's in another picture. Keep going. Yeah. Another picture? All right, yeah. we'll go forward again. You recognize yourselves? Do you see Carrie Hull in there? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Diane Terry Shriver's over there on the right. Mary, and I can't see you. Well, let's that's okay. Sure. We can see her in another one. Maybe Diane. Oh, and who's it? Yeah. 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 Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. And uh, I think we have one more. There's Mary there. at the back of the front. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Catherine. Yeah. And this is our daughter, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, God. Then yeah. there's Terry. Terry. And Terry. Uh, yeah, I can't see from here, so you have to identify yeah. yourselves. Um, okay, so anyway, that's the Flechette Mobile. And we, uh, we did sing the song. Hang on a second. I took this out of the box. Oh my God. And both straps broke. Because <laughs> it's been in there for almost 40 years. Wow. Okay. But um, you probably are wondering what this wonderful song is, right? So basically, it's. <laughs> Please. 
the street. But we had a good time. Yeah, good and all that. Huh? David can still say it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Catherine. Case in the war can say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lawyers and everybody. Okay, fine. Moving along. So that was the song. We were going to invite you along to sing along with us, but I forgot to push the slide. slide in. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the podium, which was set up at the pumping station at the back of Four Water Street. You know where Leet Market is? That's the Four Water Street. Go to the end of the parking lot, and you'll see a little bit of machinery in there. That's the pumping station. Um, and at the podium, we have some dignitaries from left to right. You have State Representative Sid Holbrook, um, who was hoping to be able to be here today. Um, but I guess Sid didn't make it. State Senator Ken Hampton, State Representative Linda Emmons, Selectman and Fire Marshal Jim Grote, Selectman Ed Guzbowski, and First Selectman Bob Blair. Sid was one of the consultants for the project, as at the time he owned Monflow Septic Company in Westbrook. So during the ceremony, Sid presented Chairman Strauss with a t-shirt which read, Pump men have more fun. <laughs> but no commemorative event would be complete without a ribbon cutting. So come on, a fancy red ribbon? I don't think so. Surely you can figure out what was cut in this event, and it didn't even require scissors. This is an overview of the parade site. Everybody turned out for this. This was not just a Tiny thing, Chester was very excited. And as you can see, some of the newspaper headlines. Um, we thought this was the end of it, but we found out this was a bigger deal than we realized when my grandmother called from Miami. She said, what the heck is your husband up to? The story of Chester's festivities was picked up by AP and appeared in the Miami Herald the Pacific Stars and Stripes, the Hartford Current, New Haven Register, and newspapers everywhere. I think my grandma might have had a little difficulty sharing these accomplishments with some of her Mahjong buddies. <laughs> Nonetheless. And no event is complete without refreshments. So, of course, we had a table with WPC Aid, that's actually lemonade in case you're worried, and chocolate munchkins, and they are making a reprise here today. We have more WPC Aid and more munchkins for you. Um, you know the symbolism. Uh, you want to come back? The symbolic is other refreshments too. We want to thank you and we want to uh, ask you to please join us for refreshments. Um, in a minute. Is there anyone else that has something they'd like to say? Anybody have memories? Memories? Of those days? A little crap around. Memories of before we Stephen. 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 Oh, I got you. Can you keep them? Can you keep them PC? Come on. I can do my best. Okay, do your best. Uh, you want to come up? Yeah, she needs to come up. Stephen Sabowski, our. Yeah. 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 So I was 19 when this happened, and I, I didn't care. It's going to be a blast. I mean, come on, it's sewer parade. It's Chester. The next day, I went to work, and I worked for Sue and Joel Jacobson in Saybrook. And she said, you had a phone call from NBC, David Letterman. He's going to be calling back. Said, oh, OK, he didn't. But I was like, wow. My mother calls and said, my Aunt Tisha in Scottsdale I said, did I just see Steven on the television in a bra? <laughs> I'm like, yes. And uh, later that afternoon, while I was still at work, a phone call from a Chicago radio station to do an interview to talk about this madness of a sewer parade. Now, we, we needed this sewer because, as Eric Zeman will remember, when we were kids, we'd go fishing. My mom would go, where are you going? Oh, we're going to go fishing for crappies. Because <laughs> uh, that's just the way it was. So this was something we, the town really needed. 
And thank God, Richard, you guys did a fantastic job putting that together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the last closing memory I have, and it's, it's a really good one. My father for weeks saying, yep, my son the queen. <laughs> he was proud. It was fun. But it was, an, it was an awesome, special time. It really, really it was. was. So that's it. September 30th, 1984, my 40th birthday. And Billy Bonfanti was taking a photograph of the building. I said, Billy, what's going on? You know? Oh, it's going to go on the market on Monday. And we said, we'll be there. You know? And no way could we afford it, but we said, we have to do this. It's, we had been looking for our own building for our business. Peter had worked out of the highway. Anyway. So we were able to do that. Um, the bank gave us amazing terms. We were able to um, assume the old mortgage. It's a long story, but uh, well, then let's see. Eight years later, our business had grown, and we actually needed more room. So we planned an addition, and I have to back up too because we did a, a major staircase in 1984-85. It was a very rickety staircase. And George Anderson was our car contractor, and he was a great guy. We never even thought about, is there a septic? Is there, a, you know, we never <laughs> thought about it. So eight years later, we're now doing this major, major addition. And we have to rip off the back of the building where the package store was, that addition, the brick addition. And we also realized it would be really terrific if we could tie into the sewer system. And I went over to the town hall and they said, no, 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 you have to prove that you have a malfunctioning system. We had no idea what we even had. <laughs> and we had only had a couple people, you know, working upstairs. Well, damn it, again, my birthday. <laughs> September 30th, this is, uh, what is it, 1992 or something. Um, the crew is ripping off the back of this building, and what did they discover? The septic tank. And they had broken the corner of the septic tank. <laughs> Turns out that George Anderson, all those years ago, said, there's no way they can afford to deal with replacing the septic. So he poured the footings for the stairway right on top of the septic tank. Oh my god. <laughs> so I took a photograph of this now malfunctioning um, septic tank, brought it over to the town hall, and I said, okay, you've got a malfunction. <laughs> so, Eight years later, it's another birthday present. I said, how many women get a birthday present? <laughs> 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 a malfunctioning septic tank. So I always said, Chester provides. Anybody else care to share some of these wonderful stories? Septic humor? No? No? All right. Again, Richard. Uh, I guess we both wanted to say thank you to everybody thank you. Thank you. coming today. If you have more questions, thank you. they'll be here. As I said, there's a display table. Oh, I did want to mention, no, there's no theme here. Don't, don't get carried away. For some reason, which makes sense, we did uh, several years ago write a book called Outhouses of Connecticut. Okay, it, 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 there's no relation. It's just, it, it's a long story, but in any case, we brought a pile of them here today. Uh, at this point in time, because they, they are a little uh, long in the tooth, 
We're selling them for $10. Everything's going to the Historical Society. So if you'd like to make a donation and have a nice little outhouse book, there's a pile over here, um, and $10, and just give it to Carrie Hall, and that's that's that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Look at Bruce.
visitors and residents and honored guests. <coughs> Thanks for coming to this little dedication service this morning, or ceremony this morning. We had a lot of fun putting the system in, and now let's hope it works. Before we get into the various announcements and dignitaries, I'd like to call on the Chester Fife and Drum Corps to play a song for us, if you would please. Also, over there, we are taking orders for the famous sewer shirt, which, of course, you've seen around here. Um, the purpose of it is to raise monies to complete the park area, which is up on Maple Street near the new uh, parking lot area um, in the Leachville zone. Without further ado, I'd like to announce or to introduce to you a gentleman we all know who waded through an awful lot of Sewer work in the last several years, Bob Blair. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the town, I wish to welcome everyone to this special celebration on the semi-completion of our community sewer system. We have a few things to do to touch up. Normally, we would not expect any festivities when a sewer is built. However, there are some interesting things that have happened during the past 16 years. On taking office in 1967, I was presented with an official order from the DEP stating that Chester was a polluter and a schedule of action must be taken to correct these violations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Our second speaker, Linda Emmons, the state representative from our 101st Assembly District. Linda Emmons. Good morning. It's very nice to see so many members of Chester out here for this dedication. I would say that you're lucky that uh, you persevered for 16 years to have a mini solution like this particular plant rather than what's going on in East Hampton for the many millions of dollars to take care of their sewer problems. Thank you, Linda. Another gentleman, from the, he's a senator from the 33rd Senatorial District, Ken Hampton. Ken? Grace, ladies and gentlemen, I became involved in this about two years ago when I was working for the Chamber of Commerce of Middlesex County. And I recall a day in December when it was about zero and wind blowing about 90 miles an hour. At that particular time, I wasn't too sure if we ever were going to get a sewer in Chester. But I'm very happy that I played a small part in getting some money to get this project off of the ground after so many years. Our last visitor this morning, Zid Holbrook, is a representative from the 33rd, 35th there you go, district, which encompasses Westbrook, I guess, and, and Essex. A visiting dignitary from Hartford, Zid Holbrook. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. I was supposed to have gone to Maine this weekend, but then I realized what kind of an opportunity I was giving up. <laughs> Ken Hampton, having a background in education, I'm sure will be asked to speak many times on his field. Linda Emmons, having one on finance, I'm sure will be asked to speak many times in her field. However, having the profession that I have, I will never probably get an opportunity to speak on sewage again. So therefore, I gave up my my trip to Maine and decided to come here to come and be with you here today. You've done a great job, not only the Water Pollution Control Authority, but of all the residents of the town of Chester. It says, pump men never lose their prime. I won't 
don't comment on that one. Uh, I'd like now to introduce to you a group of folks that a month ago together were non existent. They sang this morning going through our lovely town. We call on them to sing again for us two songs. The first one would be the WPCA, the official WPCA song. And the second one will be the Norton Sewer song from the Honeymoons. Ladies and gentlemen, Chester, next is California, the Flushettes! someone we've heard a lot about and no one seems to know who he is. The chairman of WPCA, the Water Pollution Control Authority, Richard Strauss. Richard. Thank you. You've got a couple Everything of pictures Everything at this point has really been said. Uh, I would like to extend my thanks to all the previous Water Pollution Control Authority members and current members as well as our attorney, Dave Royston, without whom we couldn't be where we are today. Our construction company, DMS Construction, Monoflow Construction, who uh, has been involved in one of the subcontracts, as well as Coastal Construction Company. Uh, specifically, we're just very happy that we've been able to complete this project, solve a major problem for our town. Uh, we have probably seen many, many meetings with hundreds of people. We're glad that the celebration exceeds uh, our greatest expectations and glad that you came out to be with us today. Uh, at this point, I'd like to call on Bob Blair, first selectman, Eddie Grzbowski, second selectman, and Jim Grove, third selectman, to do our official ribbon cutting ceremony. Who spotted you first? I said, I'll bet he's right up there. Get a shot of that. Oh, this has got to be this. This was produced especially for today. <laughs> Here we go. 
as you may imagine, we couldn't let it go at that. There's only one sort of parade and dedication ceremony that will probably ever be held in the world at any time. And we searched our town high and low, north to south and east to west, to locate a Mr. and Ms. Sewer. It was tough. We had many applicants. <laughs> the full commission held an emergency meeting last night. <laughs> and we made our choice. We're very proud to bring up Mrs. Sewer, Stephen Sapowski, and Mr. Sewer, Karen Morrow. To help yeah. Cadillac, if any, or catalog, rather, if anyone's interested after the ceremony. <laughs> the count of three, please make the first official flush. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. have a parade on Labor Day is not an unusual sight at all. We showed you two of them earlier in this broadcast. But the one you're going to see now in Chester today, unusual isn't a strong enough word to describe it. Wacky, I think, is more appropriate. You be the judge. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> it's an event that nearly everyone in this town of 3,000 finds deeply moving. With the flush of a toilet and a blast from a siren, Chester is celebrating the completion of a $700,000 sewer system. The new plumbing will probably cut into the portable toilet business, but Ernie Horton doesn't seem to care. It's like a competitor to us, but I think they need it. You know what I mean? The fife and drum corps played when Johnny comes marching home. Next came Mrs. Seward. That honor went to Steve Sapowski. He's worried that his reputation is going down the drain. I guess I was um, the only one they could find, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is really an act of political genius. The town's leaders have taken a mundane subject like a sewer project, gained nearly 100% state and federal financing, 
and generated what you might call an outpouring of public enthusiasm. My father told me since I've been here, which has been like 19 years, they've been fighting over having this stupid sewer system. <laughs> they finally got it after 20 years almost. It has been a long struggle, but finally the townspeople can breathe a sigh of relief. When they look at what they've done, their chests swell up with civic pride. The world's first and probably last sewer parade will live forever in the words of a song. When you take a shower before a date, the system will be working. Let's celebrate. Now we got cleaner water and a place to wait. The next time that you wash up, thank the WPCA. The next time that Adlai you Stevenson wash action news eight Chester. Uh, how did you spend your Labor Day? <laughs> Isn't that so? Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Al Terzi. I'm Jerry Harris. Stay tuned for